All right, so I was poking around uh, a lot of weapons for an upcoming video, wink, nudge, and the Ratatat shined as a very, very strong weapon that I had surprisingly never talked about before. So, as you can see, it absolutely shreds. It's a very, very strong weapon, hits really, really hard, and would you believe it or not, I am using its worst of three builds. Yes, this thing can get a whole heck of a lot stronger. Now, initially, I actually recorded gameplay with this weapon comparing it to the Blastatron Mini, because when the Blastatron Mini came out, it was a essentially just a better Ratatat, and that's basically true. They are very, very similar. They are pistols that were essentially converted to SMGs later down the line because they were always fully automatic, pretty decent accuracy, good fire rate, damage, everything, just great weapons between the two of them, and the Ratatat was essentially just a lower damage version of the Blastatron Mini that shot faster, did less damage per bullet, and of course you can make it any element in the game. And so when the Blastatron Mini came out, it sort of took away the Ratatat's niche, and it kind of fell out of use, but that pesky 12.0 update, everybody kind of forgot about it made the Ratatat just a little bit stronger and more recently new six perks came to the game so as you can see you now have the ability to stack the damage after every single bullet or stack the crit rating now the better of the two kind of depends on playstyle. if you have the damage variant of this great we'll talk about that later if you have the crit rating i think that's technically the better one but i'll sort of explain why i don't really prefer these perks anyway later down the line and you can see the build i'm going with this is actually pretty standard so the best perks for the ratatat depend on what you want to do if you have the causes affliction damage then you're great if you have have the snare version i actually have bad news this is the only weapon I've ever seen as a recording that doesn't have a damage to slowed and snared enemies. So if you have the damage dealt snares, you basically have a junk schematic. I'm sorry, um, but it's true. So the damage to affliction is the only one where you can actually get that 45% damage buff. And like I said, this is actually the worst variant of this weapon. I do have some graphics. I'm going to show my monitor capture here, assuming that I can actually get this to... There you go. Fortnite doesn't like to give up its full screen. So with the damage to afflicted, this is pretty much the number that you get. For reference, the Thrasher caps out at about 245,000 DPS with the exact same setup, and the Silent Spectre is around 230k. So, it's actually swinging pretty hard with some of the better SMGs in the entire game, but when you factor in that crit stacking perk, that's where things get complicated. Now, to go back to our weapon schematic here, it is an absolute switchblade. This weapon can be whatever you want it to be. You got damage and crit damage, and you can go triple crit damage on this thing. You can, you can do a lot. So, let's dissect this piece by piece. This is like the standard conventional build. It has a pretty normal-ish mag size around 35 and a really fast fire rate of 13.5. That's where a lot of our damage is coming from here. So I still recommend a mag size. I'm going to get that out of the way right away. Damage doesn't tend to add as much to the equation as a reload or mag size perk. It's kind of a quality of life thing and in sustained output where you're shooting a bigger target where you will be reloading often or you're shooting multiple targets where you're going to need a lot of bullets, the damage perk does not make up for just having more bullets at the ready in the magazine. So I'm going to sort of ignore this perk from here on out. As for the element, it also depends on the zone that you're playing in. There are a lot of fire zones as of recording. In the future, that may be different. So as of now, I'm using water and you should just change the element to whatever fits your needs. I'll link my elements guide in the description below to explain all of the diversities around the different elements. Now for the other perks, that's where things get complicated. So at this point, we're essentially no longer talking about the specific six perk. It doesn't really matter what you have going forward, assuming that you have one of the, the stacking perks. I'm sorry, slowed and snared users. The damage to afflicted is only useful if you have this six perk. So you can go crit rating double crit damage. That's nice. That's very, very standard, but it sort of depends. So if you have the grants damage option here, then a second crit damage perk is highly recommended. And there's only one other consideration. So if you have the stacking damage perk, then this is sort of what you want to do. Crit rating, crit damage is pretty standard. I always mention that fire rate and damage is sort of the same DPS, but what's a lot stronger than fire rate and damage is fire rate, crit rating, and crit damage, which is an option on this weapon. If you go fire rate, crit rating, crit damage, you are going to be absolutely annihilating everything. Unfortunately, I don't have footage of any of these because I don't actually have the Ratatat with the special six perks, and I'm not about to spend my core re-perk. I apologize, but I can show the numbers for the stacking crit rating down the line. Now, the reason that I don't like these six perks and why I've mentioned before that I'm not really going to be using them is that that damage is nice and all. In this case, when you're going crit rating double crit damage, you're going to be slaying no matter what. You don't even need the stacking damage perk. It's just going to be stacking more damage on top of it, about 27%. So 
that's already going to be fine and dandy. But with the crit rating perk, you have a thing called diminishing returns kicking in where every single crit rating perk that you add will be doing less and less for your weapons. So this crit rating brings us up to 38%, but this second crit rating will not bring us nearly as far as the first one did and would actually be less total damage output than a damage perk or a crit damage perk where every other option is sort of just a better option. And in the case when you have the stacking crit rating perk in the six perk slot, meaning when you're shooting in roughly a little more than one second with a 13.5 fire rate, you're going to be reaching those 15 shots really, really fast, and your crit rating will shoot right up to 37% if you don't have a crit rating perk. What all of this means, and I'll go back to my math here, is that if you do away with a crit rating perk and you just go triple crit damage on this thing with the exact same build that I was already showing, just crit damage, crit damage, you can reach 262,000, which means you're adding about 30,000 DPS, which is only when you're spun all the way up, meaning to say that you're only going to be surpassing the DPS of the previous version when you are 15 bullets deep, give or take. And that's kind of why I don't love this weapon. You're sort of constantly resetting your bonus. Every time you stop firing for longer than a second, you'll be losing your crit rating and starting from scratch. And as I said, with 13.5 shots per second, it builds up very, very fast, but it's really something you want to consider when you're using this weapon. And then, of course, the other version and sort of the last perk loadout that I'll be talking about is the fire rate double crit damage version, which goes way over 300,000 DPS. That is your optimal way to run this. You will be turning this weapon into an absolute bullet hose. You'll be firing 19 shots per second with two crit damage perks and a standard crit chance because of that stacking six perk. This thing will absolutely melt everything. Again, I wish I had a copy to show you the performance of this weapon, but just take the footage of it with the normal damage to afflicted and just uh, mentally add 70,000 damage per second. It would be uh, a lot stronger. And then, of course, I did mention that this would be the last perk loadout that I recommend, that being the fire rate, crit damage, crit damage, and the numbers that I just showed. But if you roll triple crit damage on this, or fire rate double crit damage, it'll be really, really good with totally rocking out. And this weapon is sort of a totally rocking out fanboy gun, because anything with triple crit damage and a high fire rate is just going to melt everything. As you can see, it's just annihilating crowds of zombies, and the smashers are just going to disappear, and... I don't love Totally Rockin' Out. It's a very high damage buff for a very brief amount of time, so it's not something I personally prefer, but if you're somebody who likes that, then triple crit damage is obviously very possible with this weapon and seriously recommended if you're going to be running Totally Rockin' Out. But as I mentioned, that added fire rate double crit damage would be very, very nice as well, so you can pretty much go either way with that. So, yeah, it depends on your six perk. It's kind of a complicated conversation, but no matter how you spin it, this weapon is going to be insane. With the loadout that I have here, with the copy that I have, it's going to be a very, very B-tier SMG. It's going to be swinging right up there underneath the Thrasher and underneath the Silent Spectre, but about as strong as the Bobcat kind of deal. But if I had the stacking damage or crit rating, you can, anything that reaches over 300,000 DPS for reference is an insanely strong weapon. And uh, we'll have to be talking about that in one of my future videos coming up. If I'm no longer teasing that in the future, that'll be linked below and you guys can check it out there. If you guys enjoyed this video and you guys want to support me, feel free to use code MISTA at your checkout. If you guys want to become a channel member, you can with the join button on the channel or the link in the description below. You get lots of nights emotes and everything that you can hopefully someday use in the comment section. But I will be moving my streams over to Twitch so if you guys want to follow over there, I'd really appreciate it. The streams are very fun. We have a good time. You guys can ask any question you want. Hang out. Enjoy. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, have a nice day. And then...